Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be talking about the 18 year property cycle, a model that has been extremely accurate so far, and how I will be using this model to aid my decision making and find investments that will be outperforming in the coming decades. I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about the 18 year property cycle. This model is extremely popular amongst long term investors who use it to time their entry and exit into the property market. If this is the first time you've heard of this property theory, then this model pretty much predicts with a lot of accuracy the exact bust and boom of a property cycle. And based on the findings we went through in my last video, this model has been extremely accurate. If you haven't watched my previous video, which goes over the three phases of this cycle in a lot more detail and links actual events to the recovery recovery phase, the explosive phase, and the recession phase of the property cycle, then I would strongly recommend you to do so because there is a lot of value in that video. In today's video, we will discuss how I've used this model to aid my decision making and identify markets that I believe will outperform Melbourne and Sydney in the coming years and decades. As always, please understand that this is not financial advice and I am not a financial advisor. This is simply my personal opinion and my personal strategies. I will strongly encourage you to do your own research and due diligence and get help from real financial experts before jumping into any big financial or investment decisions. Let's start by identifying where we are in this property cycle. I personally believe that we are currently in the second year of this explosive growth cycle where we are seeing huge amounts of construction, very enthusiastic media headlines, relaxed lending standards and massive growth in just about every corner of the country. In my previous video, I went over the reasoning behind why I think our current growth phase mimics that of the explosive phase in this 18 year property cycle. If we look at the events in 2008, 2017 and 2020, then you will understand how accurate this model has been. However, this has only been the case for our biggest cities, Melbourne and Sydney and all the other markets are all following their own cycles and at different stages of those cycles. Before we dig into this a bit deeper, I just want to make sure that you understand, despite how accurate this model has been, past performance does not indicate future returns. And there are a lot of uncertainties in our property market, our economy and the global economy. And we should only use this model as a compass to point us in the right direction so we can conduct additional research to verify our findings and not use it as a roadmap thinking that it will get us guaranteed returns. Based on this model, the Melbourne and Sydney markets are in their second year of this explosive growth phase, meaning this growth phase could end in the next four to five years. So by around 2026, I do agree with this model. I believe that if interest rates remain low until 2024, like the government and the Reserve Bank of Australia had promised, and then increases at a slow rate that's in line with wage and income growth, and with the additional demand for housing from overseas migration once our borders are open, we could very well see this growth cycle last until 2026. However, we need to now think about what is going to happen at the end of this growth cycle and what the recession phase means. Without even looking at this 18 year property cycle, we need to understand that sometime down the track, we will see a correction in our property market as our properties become more and more affordable and as our debt levels start to increase higher and higher. And in my personal opinion, I believe that we can see a correction between 20 to 40% over a period of three to four years after we conclude this growth cycle. Look, I'm not one of those people who's going to tell you that the property market is going to crash by 30 to 50% tomorrow. That is unrealistic and quite simply very bad advice because it scares people and it discourages people from investing. And we all know that because the inflation rate is so high right now, if you are not investing your money, you are losing money to inflation. It is as simple as that. However, I'm not going to tell you that the property market can only go up and that it will keep going up for the rest of our lives because that is simply not realistic either. And as history has taught us, that is a very dangerous mindset to have. Looking back at 2017 to 2018, we saw a correction of around 15 to 20% in Melbourne and Sydney over a two year time frame, which is quite a significant correction of around 10% per year. And this is where I'm getting my 20 to 40% correction prediction from. Because as history has taught us, during a correction, a major correction, we should expect to see a drop in value of between 5 to 10% a year. And over a four year recession phase, we could see a drop of between 20 to 40%, with 40% in our biggest cities and 20% in our smaller cities. 
Look, these are very rough estimates and we are looking very far into the future. But this is simply what the model, a model that has been extremely accurate so far and what history is telling us. In my personal opinion, we will see a growth of between 15 to 20% in 2021. And this growth is likely to slow down until our borders are reopened. At which point, the increased demand from all the people migrating to Australia putting upward pressure on our house prices will once again return our markets back into double digit growth. This means we are likely to see a growth around 30 to 50% from now until 2026. And after such a strong growth cycle, it is perfectly reasonable to expect a correction of between 20 to 40%. Now, knowing that the Melbourne and Sydney markets have been following this growth cycle perfectly, and that this growth cycle indicates that this growth phase is likely to end in the coming years, is there a better way for us to invest our money going forward? Let me show you this table right here that shows the change in medium house prices from 2017 to 2018. As you can see, Melbourne and Sydney suffered a correction of close to 10% that year. However, Hobart saw a growth of 8.8%, while Brisbane, Adelaide and Perth saw little change in their medium house price. So how can we explain this? Well, in my personal opinion, the answer is quite simple. Let me use an example. This example is probably going to get a lot of dislikes and a lot of hate, but I think it is a great example. What I'm about to do is compare real estate to cryptocurrency. I know, I know, this is outrageous, but hear me out. Whenever a cryptocurrency growth cycle or bull cycle starts, Bitcoin, the most well-known and the original cryptocurrency, is always the first one to see significant growth in the price and its value, while all the other smaller cryptocurrencies stay stagnant. And when this cryptocurrency bull cycle ends, Bitcoin will be the first one to slow down in terms of growth, while all the other smaller cryptocurrencies continue to reach new heights. I think this is very similar to the real estate market because whenever a real estate boom starts, the bigger cities like Melbourne and Sydney are usually the cities that people throw money into first. And as a result, these cities are usually the ones to start seeing growth first, while the other smaller cities stay stagnant for years or even decades. However, after a while, the price to income ratio, the affordability, the vacancy rates, the rental return, the housing supply become so attractive that these smaller markets can no longer be ignored. And this is when these smaller cities start their own little growth cycles, which is usually a few years behind Melbourne and Sydney. And as a result, even when Melbourne and Sydney stop growing, these cities will continue to grow because they are at a different stage of the growth cycle. For example, Hobart was by far the best performing capital city in Australia over the last five years. I know this because the data shows me this and because I have heavily invested into Hobart myself, I have seen a growth of around 60% over these last five years. However, prior to this growth phase, Hobart was stagnant for many, many years, while capital cities like Melbourne and Sydney saw substantial growth. Another great example is Perth. While the rest of the capital cities in Australia saw substantial growth over the last decade, the medium house price in Perth has been dropping since 2004. This is very interesting because Western Australia has the second highest medium income in Australia, but the Perth housing market is the most affordable capital city in Australia. So how do we explain this? I believe the most simple and most straightforward answer here is because Perth is only just starting to come out of its recession phase, while the rest of Australia are well into the explosive growth phase. All right, guys, I know that was a lot of information. So please feel free to go back and rewatch anything that you might not have understood. Or if you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Based on the 18 year property cycle and knowing that each of our markets is going through their own little cycle and at different stages of those cycles, we can use this information to our advantage and make better investment decisions. So how exactly do we use this information to our advantage and make better investment decisions? Well, the answer is we don't. You need to do your own research and find out exactly why you want to invest in your markets. But as always, I'm always happy to share my personal opinion and strategies. Now, going back to the Melbourne and Sydney property market, we know that these markets are well into the explosive phase and that it is only a matter of time, maybe only two or three years before they enter into the correction or recession phase. If you have been watching my previous videos, then you will know exactly what I'm about to say next. And that is, I would not personally invest in Melbourne or Sydney in the near future 
because of a number of reasons. And it is not because of the high prices, the low rental returns and the high vacancies. And because they are very late into the growth cycles and that my expected return by investing into these markets is pretty limited. Meaning I have way more downside risk compared to upside gain. And that is not a great investment in my opinion. I personally believe as a property investor, we should be looking to buy at the bottom of a cycle or as close to the bottom as we possibly can. But the funny thing here is that most people do the complete opposite. They wait for the market to completely take off before they have the courage or confidence to buy into it. And by then it is too late because the markets have already taken off and they are buying very close to the top of the cycle. This gives them very little room for growth and a lot of risk. So which markets am I personally looking into? Well, if you have been watching my previous videos, then you would know that I really like Perth. The high medium income, the improving economic conditions and numbers that make sense. High rental returns, low vacancies, a shortage of housing, as well as strong rental growth. It honestly ticks all the boxes. If you are not a fan of Perth, then there are many other markets around Australia that all make more sense than Melbourne and Sydney. If you are from Melbourne or Sydney, there are a lot of regional markets around you that in my personal opinion are very attractive such as Geelong and the more affordable areas surrounding Geelong. And if you follow me on Instagram then you will know that I was in Geelong looking at houses last weekend and I did find a lot of great deals. And the best part about these regional markets is that they have been very stagnant for a very long time and they are very early in the growth cycle. In my personal opinion, this means they will continue to generate capital growth even when Melbourne and Sydney start to slow down. So what is my plan going forward? As some of you guys know, I do own a lot of properties in Melbourne. I currently have a project in Melbourne where I'm renovating an existing property and then subdividing that property and building something in the back. I believe this project will finish sometime next year, just in time for the reopening of our borders, which is perfect if I want to sell for a good price and I will be most likely selling these properties to fund my purchases in Perth. Unless I decide to take on bigger development projects here in Melbourne, I won't be buying, I don't plan on buying in Melbourne anytime soon. And I really want to get some exposure in Perth. I feel a bit embarrassed to say this, but I do have an apartment here in Melbourne. I know, I know, I talk a lot of crap about the Melbourne apartment market, but this was one of my first purchases and we all have to learn the hard way, right? This is definitely something I'm looking to sell very, very soon. As soon as the Melbourne apartment market improves a bit for me to find a good buyer at a decent price. So I can invest the money from this sale into something much more productive. All right, this brings us to the end of the video. I really want to thank you for watching this video till the very end and I want some feedback from you guys. What did you think of the video? Do you agree with everything I've said? Let me know in the comment section below. I wish you the very best on your investing journey and I'll see all of you guys in the next video.